Greetings everybody. Okay, this is a follow-up video to the one I made this winter, last winter. It, it was called, uh, I think it was called Love the uh, Weeds, Rethinking the Relationship, something like that. In that video, I was explaining how um, I was showing what I was um, what I was about to uh, to do. It's like sort of an experiment, but it's not really an experiment per se. In this lane here, where I'm uh, I'm moving in my in my gardening practice towards towards uh, growing um, wild edibles basically instead of like instead of just growing the the genetics that uh, people t typically uh, grow in a garden which is what we call food which is pretty much everything is genetically selected genetically um, altered <laughs> I'm trying to get back to some to some food stuff that are uh, are more wild closer to the to the ancestral genetics of the plant itself and instead of wild foraging I want to incorporate these plants in the garden and so uh, I collect seeds of these wild edibles and I bring them home and then I, I, I experiment to see where they like to grow, where they germinate, you know, and, and I, don't, I don't tend to them. So, and see what happens, how they, how, how they all interact together. Uh, some of them get choked out by others and some they appear to be choked out, but they they come back once the other ones die. Anyways, it's just, it's just a big learning experience. And this lane, last this winter, last winter, I put in uh, several wild seeds of wild edibles and perennials. And uh, I'm also moving towards perennials, like as as far as food stuff goes. So less and less of the uh, conventional food. Okay, so I said I would make a follow-up video because it was winter, I put some seeds and so, you know, we want to see what happened here. <laughs> so let's have, let's walk down this lane and I could show you some, what I've, some, some things I've observed. Now the first thing to observe is this here, that. You see this plant? Let me uh, let me do a close up. Okay, it has uh, not started. This is tall. I mean, this is like uh, um, I would say at least five feet high. You know. Uh, and it's called Senna, uh, Senna. and um, I got the seeds from the side of the road. It appeared in great numbers last year because it was a very, this at least this is my hypothesis, it was a very very wet year and the year before that were very dry and and I I think the seed germination of this uh, species is really enhanced when you have a lot of moisture and it tends to then dominate over the other uh, wild plants and then it could reproduce and put and lay down a huge seed bank and wait for the right conditions. Anyways, I got a lot of seeds and I put them in here and you see there's one here here and and when the season started I I didn't think I didn't see any 
they were definitely definitely not the first to come up they were hiding uh, beneath all the rest and now that, that some of the other stuff have reached their maximum height and have started to die back I guess they were more like the spring um, type of uh, plants these have just popped up like and so I guess the um, I guess it worked basically uh, putting those seeds in here this uh, senna plant actually likes it now what about what is it about senna right well this this grows like it has a very wide range it actually you find this also in Africa and um, there are some tribes in Africa or some people in some countries that what they do is they um, they collect these leaves and then they put them in big clay pots and then they mash them down into a pulp now they put the clay pot they put a lid on the clay pot with this mushed up leaves and they bury the clay pots in the ground and then they let these this this the senna leaf mush ferment just natural lacto fermentation and every once in a while they open the lid and they they mix it you know to make sure um, everything is uh, is fermenting equally uh, across the uh, inside the uh, clay pot once this mush is fermented they dry it well they make they make like small balls of with this plant fermented plant mush and they dry these balls in the sun and then they store them and they have like a collection of all these dried balls <laughs> and and whenever they make a soup they toss these things in the soup and it's act and it's very nu nutritious it's and um you could go online and uh there are some professors in some universities in africa that have studied the chemical compositions of these uh of this uh food stuff this african food stuff and it rivals in protein uh meat it's like it's a um it's a meat substitute if one like if one could say uh, so if you have a soup and you don't got much have much going in there as terms of your uh, protein in, source then this is the, this is it so now I'm going to make some of that and that's why I'm growing it here because I did not want to take the ones on the side of the road because of like uh, I think it's called translocation you know the roots uptake some of the uh, toxic uh, materials by the road side of the road and they it goes in the in the leaves and so these ones here are grown here with and so they're they're non-toxic <laughs> so I'm going to be making some of those uh, some of that fermented African food stuff now another thing is that these here they make pods and if you look at that other video you'll see I show the pods and I show the seeds that was like you know the first step was to put the seeds and the um, the seeds of senna can be uh, baked in the oven roasted and then ground up into like a flour like and it becomes a coffee alternative now if those who are a little bit older might remember in the uh, in the 80s in the 70s and 80s and I don't know maybe they still do this you know but there was like a brand of coffee you know like the Maxwell House uh, Folgers there was one called Seneca and what it was is senna it was the senna coffee substitute that was blended with the coffee beans 
okay a bit like they do with chicory now uh, in the community coffee brand so uh, I'm also going to be doing that now I just want to say one two more things regarding this the um, senna plant is supposedly toxic uh, they will say it's not edible well it's not edible if you eat it raw if you take the seeds and you eat them raw but if you um, ferment the leaves then um, they're perfectly edible and if you roast the seeds then they're perfectly edible okay now that's the first thing the second thing is regarding what is uh, the research they've been doing in the uh, uh, pharmacopoeia the quote the medicinal aspects is that there's some alkaloids in here that are supposedly help with brain function and um, things like um, Alzheimer and dementia so this is like supposedly a medicinal herb for helping with brain function so yeah now now it's established here it'll produce lots of seeds and it'll just come back and so there you go uh, I'm now growing I'm now gardening this wild edible <laughs> it's fantastic this is how this is where I'm taking my practice um, non-intervention but there it's like a slight intervention um, now okay let's move on to something else I put in here I put a lot of the um, ironweed uh, seeds and this is the plant that you see right here let me focus on it uh, I don't know if you could see that properly let me show you some of the uh, flowers okay now ironweed and I talked about this in some other videos and um, if you put it in your mouth the leaves they melt they just like they melt it's very special I've never I've never had any um, any plants that basically the leaves melt it's almost like the um, I don't know for the people who for the Catholics <clears throat> who have gone to mass and have had the like that holy host the little bread thing they give in church you know that thing like you put on your tongue it melts like in, in your mouth <laughs> well it's kind of the same thing <laughs> whatever <clears throat> okay uh, this is called Sida S I D A Sida um, Sida acuta and now it's uh, it was growing here on this property but um, it was only in one or two areas and I wanted to make a bed here with I mean you know all these friends together <laughs> And I um, and I was experimenting to see if how how I could germinate and um, and it worked. There, this Sida plant is here. You see, is there right beside the uh, Senna, and it's uh, everywhere. <laughs> and um, now Google, go in Google and and uh, type Sida. S I D A, acuta, A C U T A, acuta. And then type, I don't know, medicinal uh, properties or antibacterial or. Because this, you will be surprised, like, this is amazing. This plant is like one of the most powerful natural antibiotic 
that you could find out there. Okay, now a lot of plants are antibiotic, antifungal, you know. Uh, I, would, I, would, I don't know, I'm going to say something crazy here, but I think all of them are, but... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but to a certain degree, some are more than others, you know. But this is it. This is it. This is like it. It deals with Staphylococcus infections with uh, Myco. Uh, my, is it Mycobacterium? Uh, gosh, uh, fungus, viral infections. It, they say viral infections. I mean, plants have, are magical in a certain way. <laughs> Um, but but if you research this, and this is like they do they do pharma, pharma, uh, pharmacological studies on this stuff. This is really like this is a natural antibiotic. So I um like I've said in my other video, I I have stopped to break down plants into food or medicine. I've I, I put them all together, okay? Medicine, food, it's all the same. And I also like consciousness is, but you have to look at my the other videos and I, I haven't been very explicit. I've been shying away from talking about this stuff because <clears throat> I'm also like remembering this uh, for myself and um, but I, I do I will make one day a very like full comprehensive video of uh, what I mean by um, food medicine consciousness and all that but um, in any event uh, so this year I, I collect the leaves and, and I will put some in, toss them in the food and so it is it has it is nutritious it has nutritional value just like this is nutritional value but it's also medicinal and so, if you put a little bit in your food, and you use this wisely and with intent, you will be preventing bacterial infections. You know, you don't have to wait to be sick in order to uh, prevent, you know, staph infections or whatever, you know, like in your throat, throat infections or whatever it is, right? So... And um, it seems like I'm rambling, but it's like I'm just, I don't rehearse these things. I just go with the flow. Now, one of the things besides for food that I will be making in here is I'm going to collect the, these plants, dry the leaves, and then I'm going to soak the leaves in virgin cold press organic olive oil and I'm going to basically infuse the olive oil with this these uh, with Siddha Acuta now this olive oil will then be a uh, an antibacterial uh, lotion but I could then mix it with uh, beeswax and make a salve you know uh, or I could just take a, a spoonful of this quote medicinal antibacterial olive oil and 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 eat it I could rub it on on my skin if I have a skin infection the salve just makes it uh, with the beeswax and, and the olive oil you know it just makes it uh, easier to smear and and not drip away everywhere you know and plus the beeswax uh, also has some properties but um yeah, so this is why I'm growing this here for food, um, uh, medicinal, um, and I'm also building a relationship with the plant um, itself on a spiritual level. All right, you could see this just right here. Like, <laughs> you could also see this um, this here. This plant here it's here it's there it's there it's there it's there now that's Jerusalem artichoke the sun choke I put some sun choke in here and uh, 
this appears to be the second go because it it just came out right after winter and in spring it just shot up and they were like six feet high they look like sunflowers and they're uh, tubers it's like they reproduce um, by the root system and um, they're uh, it's food but uh, it's also medicinal <laughs> the Jerusalem artichokes I mentioned this in another podcast but you know I might as well just say it again here the, um, are indigenous to here and they're perennials they come back every year and um, let me cross over and they um, here's some more oh here's some more right here see they're all bunching up from the uh, from where I put I put a piece uh, of the uh, tuber and they're like they they're indigenous to here and they were they almost became part of what we call food. I mean, as a um, replacement of the potatoes. The potato won because it is, um, it has less, um, it produces less digestive discomforts. <laughs> um, this Jerusalem artichoke is, it's creamy like a potato and all it tastes I actually it taste it has more taste a pota- than a potato potatoes are rather bland you know like um, and it has instead of starch potato is like starch basically it's just starch starch is a form of sugar and you put amylase enzyme uh, on starch and it and it breaks down the starch into glucose Amylase uh, is is what you, the enzyme in your saliva. So when you put a potato in your mouth, it's converted into sugar. That's <laughs> why so potatoes, you know, like it's not. If you're on a diet, you don't want to be eating too much potatoes, you know, because I mean it's sugar. Uh, now this is inulin. It's another form of uh, of carbohydrate that nourishes the plant and inulin is actually a, it's it doesn't spike the insulin it's not like sh- like glucose so it's very nutritious but it doesn't spike your insulin so it's actually like it if this would have won over potatoes we probably have america would probably be a healthier nation <laughs> and it's also like a probiotic oh look here these ones are uh there's some small flowers here of these sun chokes and so <clears throat> it's a it's a prebiotic inulin um, and the inulin means that it it's a good food source for the bacteria in your gut okay like and so gut bacteria uh, you read up on it it's important for your health uh, to have a, a good um, a good microbiome like the ecosystem inside your guts has to be healthy and you have to have good bacteria and try to have less of the the bad bacteria you know I'm making this very simple here but and this is food for the good bacteria so yeah and it's also medicinal in that it's uh if you want to um prevent diabetes you know (laughs) it's preventative like so there you go this is going to take over because these things they grow through the roots and so all this is just going to spread and then whenever uh if ever like i want to eat some of them i just come over here i take my shovel uh i get some out i leave a few behind and uh, i spread them out and i bring them home peel them cook them you have to cook them properly or else like you get gas that's the thing they they can give you gas and so that's why the potatoes took over because they don't give gas and this gives gas if not cooked properly you know if you roast this in a fire or you cook them properly you don't have gas but anyways <clears throat> there's probably other reasons why the potato won too but uh you know economic reasons 
These are, um, I'm just letting these grow. They're uh, goldenrod. They're, they're huge, like, uh, goldenrod is just for the butterflies, right? It's the last thing to flower in the season. <clears throat> when everything else has given, um, these are the ones that start to give. And so the bees, they're at the point where they're at their last push for stocking up on honey for the winter and there it's like this is it this is their last push and they're going out there for winter and the and their golden rod is just this beautiful yellow flowers golden flowers and they um the bees are like yes you know there's one last plant out there that is giving us its stuff <laughs> okay uh, this video is, is longer than i thought but whatever you know uh this um you see growing here out I actually didn't put seeds of that um, they're volunteering I put seeds a while back and um, some of the uh, here's what it is oh my gosh okay these this is a gourd it's like a zucchini it's called Loki in in, uh, in India L Loki but it's called Cocuzzi in uh, Italy. These are delicious. I mean, wow. And um, I had grown some here. I had tossed some seeds in here when I first made the bed. And, they, and some grew and I let them there. And the gourds decomposed and seeds came out. This is coming up by itself. Uh, they make huge gourds. I mean, look at that. Okay, let's see, this is my hand. This is my 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 arm. See, like <laughs> see how big this. These is very tender uh, inside. If you take them young, you could eat the peel. You just chop it up, put it in a skillet with a bit of olive oil, garlic, onions, whatever you want, and um, heat them up. And then you got yourself a uh, a wonderful meal. And these uh, in India. Are um, are using uh, Ayurvedic uh, medicine? Huh? See food, medicine again. They um, they tend to favor the leaves. From what I, I see, they they take the leaves and they uh, they make like a smoothie, like a green drink. And uh, they drink this to lower the blood sugar. Um, again, it's like one of these. Uh, um, if you're diabetic kind of a medicine you know so, and so you see like how much and it grows this thing phew, it's almost scary I mean look look at this is not even big they're gonna get I'd say at least twice this size you know <laughs> they get huge and they grow in Africa too they grow everywhere and I'm telling you and I'm not exaggerating. See, this is the tip here. You could eat everything in this. You could eat the tendrils. These, you could eat the leaves. You could eat the, the gourds. And okay, you see, this is my hand. It grows at least like one hand, hand length per day. Okay, so it's this every day, it's gonna grow this much. It's, it's, it's insane. Okay, you could eat the flowers. <sighs> And uh, I usually see this volunteered and this is going to produce more food than I could even eat. I can't even, I can't even like keep up with how much food this produces and I don't do anything. It just grows like I don't need to uh, tend to it or water it or do anything to it, you know. Um, <laughs> and now it volunteers by itself. So this whole thing, there's not a... That, um, that these uh, these uh, government professor shills and environmental people say there's not enough food on this planet that's why we need to do genetically modified rice or we need herbicides to protect the foods we have this that, and the other it's nonsense it's because people don't want to redefine what food is okay we're stuck in this small little box with uh, a certain amount 
of things, of plants we call food, and then that's it. The, this is what we have to grow, and um, and everything is everything we do is is to get these <laughs> to grow on a massive scale. If we could break that down, we would have all of this. All, all this like would be available, and it requires nothing. No watering. No no uh, fertilization. It requires only breaking free your, your mind from the program it's all about breaking away from the programming <laughs> it's all about consciousness everything okay it's why it's like um that's why i'm doing this new form of gardening is because i'm 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 breaking in new new paths like it's like i'm forging this new this new mental like uh this new uh, consciousness of what food is for humans and it's not that like i'm i'm not myself inventing this i mean this is how our ancestors ate it's just we lost sight of this and uh and do you read books on gardening see permaculture you like they they're still doing permaculture are still doing the 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 old paradigm just like biodynamic organic they're all doing the old paradigm they're growing the same kind of foods except that instead of using chemicals they're using cow dung and hokey pokey stuff with deer guts and whatever it is whatever occult things Steiner brought to the table and if you permaculture they're still if you look at permaculture they're still going to tell you how to kill all the insects that are damaging your eggplants you know it's like not about eggplants anymore and it's not about killing insects anymore permaculture is 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 80s it's so 80s you know it's 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 like driving a car uh, and looking in the rear view mirror and it's the old paradigm that you're trying to to make righteous and and you 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 find yourself in in several contradictions because of that killing insects is not the way to do it okay this here i i also put some seeds of this and it's already gone to seed look i'll try not to move i put it over here you could see the tiny brown seeds in there already. <laughs> now that is amaranth. Am amaranth. And I eat the leaves of amaranth. And uh, I just uh, steam them or put a little bit of water and, and get them to... Uh, uh, get them to be a little bit more tender, you know. And I eat the seeds. This costs a fortune. Amaranth seeds. If you go to the store, these seeds cost a fortune. <laughs> but um, hey, I put some here because <clears throat> this is like I, I see. I, I I don't grow spinach anymore. It's over. There's no need to grow spinach anymore. This comes back by itself. And uh, spinach is it's not that easy to grow. I mean, gosh, you have to you have to baby that thing and make sure it doesn't get overtaken by the weeds. You have to have you have to water it. You have to put some nutrients. You know, you want it's spinach is like is delicate, but this thing you do nothing. It just comes and blah, it's just like it's everywhere, and it's and it tastes so good. I told this story in another video about. Um, how I discovered this, uh, it, I think it's called green amaranth, is um, I didn't even know it was growing here. It was a, uh, f a friend of mine from, uh, uh, I was going to say India, but he's not. He's from Bengal. And um, he came here look, to look at, my, at the garden and he was like, he told me, he says, hey, he says, do you know what that is? I was like, no. He said, that's amaranth. He says, my family, when I grew up, you know, uh, 
survived thanks to this stuff. He says, my mom knows like 15 ways to cook this stuff. And we had this for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and <clears throat> when we were poor, and this thing, uh, the seeds made porridge with it, like, this is like a complete protein too, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's a superfood. Amaranth is a superfood. I mean, they had also this here, the uh, Mayas, or is it the Aztecs? Uh, I think the Mayas were more uh, quinoa and the Aztecs were more amaranth. They would take the seeds and make a like a, a like a porridge, and then they would build statues of their gods with this. You know, this was a superfood. It it fed the it fed the warriors and gave them muscle mass to you know to be able to hunt and protect their tribes. And um, when the con conquistadors came the um, uh, the Spanish uh, colonizers you know that came uh, to South America they basically their purpose was to uh, was to take over and uh, and to genocide basically the natives here you know like uh, so they could so um, the Europeans could take over, just like they did with the uh, Native Americans, you know, like in uh, in the United States and Canada. Well, the conquistadors, they're, they were there to take down the Mayas and all of them, you know. And so what they did is they banned this. When they saw this was one of their staple foods, they said, okay, it is now illegal. Anyone who grows this or is caught with these seeds and all that is put to death, right? So they, and they burned the fields and they tried to get rid and for like, I don't know how many, I think it's 400 years, this thing went underground, like, not literally, well, maybe underground, and <laughs> then it germinated back, but basically, this whole thing was kind of snuffed, now, like, um, it's become, with the, the new age movement, and, you know, like, the ushering of the new reality, and I won't get into that, but these, these, this popped up again, right? Quinoa and amaranth popped up again. And you find it in like the posh supermarkets of uh, LA and uh, the bigger cities and uh, the health food stores. It's the thing, you know, and it's still like over there, like some of the, the Mayan descendants, they're struggling, you know, to survive there, for, economically speaking, and and we're over there, you know, growing now like quinoa and and, and abusing them still, but uh, and there's, so there's no reason to be doing that because it'll grow in your backyard, wild. Like here's some more of the Jerusalem artichokes. Okay, this here I didn't put there uh, is vervain is in the vervain family, so. Those who know about vervain could uh, speak to its medicinal properties. The witches out there huh, the w could talk about vervain too. Uh, <laughs> because there's spirits, plant consciousness and spirits. I put this seed and I forget what it's called. Uh, Josh, I want to say something like Upuretum. Like Upuretum? Up up upuretum? It's a, a it's a native plant uh, from here, and I went to uh, the arboretum, and they were and uh, they were talking about how we need to bring back the indigenous species here for the wildlife, the butterflies, and all that. And I was like, yeah, well, that's what I do in my garden. So uh, I I got some seeds and I put them in here, and see, this one came out beautiful so yeah all part of it here's a mix of uh, the coffee plant with the uh, Sida plant and uh, yeah uh, more coffee plant more Sida plant so it w so this is what basically came out from uh, and now we're in midsummer. See, look, here's some amaranth, and the amaranth is now gone, to, going to seed. But um, and uh, what I do is I take a bucket and I put the bucket underneath here, and I take this and I shake that in the bucket, and the seeds fall off. So that's how I collect the seeds. And you see, it's like kind of it, it, there's some seeds already fell here. These have at least two 
uh, there's like a double rotation. They'll grow in spring. You can have lots of greens and see they're already in seed right now. These seeds will fall and then uh, in, uh, in fall, <laughs> there'll be more greens. So twice a year you get the greens. I got these greens, the, the coffee, uh, the center plant that are gonna come soon. All these seeds here I could collect. Uh, what else is in here? Um, that's, I think, I put some other stuff in here. I put a, two big roots I got at the store. Of, I think it's yucca. <clears throat> I, I haven't seen them. I don't know about them. I have no relationship with that plant uh, species. And they're, they're perennial. They're supposedly, like, would just come back all the time and grow. But then I'll see. Maybe they'll pop up somewhere at one point. But, um, okay. Before I, I, I stop this video, I wanted to show, to do one last thing. Hmm. I always like to show this plant because I just, I don't know, I, I really enjoy this plant here. Right here. Hmm. This. This is called Bitter Chamber, or Chamber Bitter. And, uh, you could recognize it. Uh, some would say it looks like mimosa, sure. But if you turn it around, it has these little balls on the back. Those are going to be the seeds, right? And so, um, yeah, if you, you could tell it really apart that, that easily. Now this plant here, I don't know about its nutritional uh, values. Um, I could tell you it's probably, it's, it's antibacterial. <laughs> Uh, but no, um, why do I like this plant so much is because when I, when I started, when I saw it was growing here, um, and I, I, I always let it grow wherever I see it, I don't cut it down, you know, is because um, when I identified this plant, I found that it was very, 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 very well appreciated in China. And I was like, what? This grows in China also. It's like, and in China, like I don't know how many universities are are conducting research on this stuff, but it's huge. I mean, the professors over there, pharmaceutical companies. I see in China they have a different um, paradigm. They're under a different paradigm when it comes to pharmaceuticals. They're still very much in the uh, herbalism. You know, the Chinese uh, herbalism is is part of uh, the healing system, you know? Here, like, it's growing. It's like the new age, you know, um, movement is bringing in all this herbalism, this uh, witch wicca, witchcraft, like plant medicine, plant spirit, first nation, shamanism, psychedelic, mishmash of stuff going on. <coughs> but in China, it's always been very popular, the herbalism, and so, you go to the pharmacy and you got a lot of like uh, a lot of powdered plants and dried leaves and teas and stuff now this one here is very big in china and and what it's what they use it for is um fatty liver disease okay now liver basically like fatty liver disease fatty liver is uh, they also call it non-alcoholic uh, liver disease. Like, you know, people say if you drink a lot of alcohol, you get cirrhosis of the liver and you got, you know. Well, if you don't drink alcohol, you could still mess up your liver. And there's fat deposits that could uh, go in your liver. And your liver could be clogged up. And, you know, like, if your liver is not doing well, you're not doing well. Chances are your liver is not doing well. Just saying, you know, I don't know you, but chances are your liver is not doing well because of all the toxins everywhere. This is what uh, they use in uh, Chinese herbalism. So now all you need to do is make a tea with this. That's it. That's all there is to it. And there's so much growing in this property. I could probably start a business 
and just make and just dry this put it into little pouches and uh, sell it uh, for liver detox you know healing a fatty liver especially in the United States I mean a lot of people have liver problems and uh, not just in the United States I mean the world is so toxic right now your liver is working overtime <laughs> <clears throat> the, uh, that's why people are saying, you know, you have to do a liver flush, uh, gallbladder, liver flush, because it's all clogged up. You know, you got the uh, stones, the kidney flush, the kidney stones, you got the liver, uh, gallbladder stones and all that. Our systems, uh, our organs are not doing well. See some more. In any event, uh, that plant is just here now it's a part of the quote gardening experience <laughs> so um see i crossed over and look you see it's still here <laughs> now what i wanted to say yeah i don't know why this is maybe not so relevant but it's part of the liver uh, this whole liver thing there's this African professor who's done does research in malaria okay now malaria is is also related to the liver in that your liver becomes the home of a parasite so you got these parasites that are living in your liver and are reproducing and are making their babies and their liver and uh, this supposedly parasite is gets into your blood because of a mosquito biting you and injecting that parasite in your blood and the parasite goes to your liver and then it starts to make that parasite makes babies in your liver Okay, so now this professor found that this happens because your liver is amenable to the, to the parasite m making a home and making babies. In other words, if, you, if your liver, and he says, you know, to keep it simple, if your liver is dirty, these parasites will thrive in your liver and you will get what is called malaria if you have a clean liver functioning properly even if a mosquito bites you and you have this parasite these eggs in your blood and they hatch in your liver or they're not going to overtake your liver your liver will get rid of it will keep this in check you won't get malaria so it's not about being bitten by the mosquito or not because he says uh, pretty much everybody will like can get bitten and but not everybody gets malaria all right um, and so just you know just another reason why you want to have a clean liver is for parasites right you don't want to create a home for the parasites so yeah so there you have it uh, this is what this bed has done following my winter seeing yeah okay let me show you this is pretty interesting this is a cucumber I put some cucumbers in here a while back and uh, they are coming back, um, they came back this year by themselves. I'm not even going to eat them because at this point, it, it's just, I'm just letting this go and it'll become what it wants to become. And I'm, I observe and I learn from it. You see, it's a learning experience. I'm building a relationship with the plant world by uh, learning when to intervene and it's um, the windows at the reproduction level <laughs> yeah. 
the seed level you know you you learn how they reproduce and you help them to reproduce and then you let them go and you see you know they, they become like your babies in a sense like this is my family here you know and uh, they're doing what they're doing you know <laughs> so that's it um, I know this is a very like we're at 50 minutes is a long video but um, there's a lot to say I mean there's a lot more stuff I see here but I'm not talking about because uh, um, I've talked about some of these in other videos but anyway there you go that was the follow-up if for those who saw the winter video um, called something love of the weeds rethinking the relationship something there might be consciousness in there so that was i said i would make a follow-up and this is the follow-up all right be good everybody and uh love the plants no need to kill the insects okay bye bye